Russian forces fired a cruise missile at the southern Ukrainian city of Odessa on Saturday and bombarded a besieged steel mill in Mariupol. They're hopeful, as it appears, to complete this conquest of the port city in time for the Victory Day celebrations. Ukraine, meanwhile, has announced that women, children and elderly have been evacuated from the mill area, but it is a key Russian war objective. Here's a report of why Mariupol is suddenly back in the news. The Russia-Ukraine war has been going on for over two and a half months now. Putin's army fired a cruise missile at the southern Ukrainian city of Odessa on Saturday and bombarded the besieged steel mill in Mariupol. Hopeful to complete their conquest of the port city in time for Russian Victory Day celebrations on Monday. Amid raining missiles, shells and bombardments in Ukraine, Russia is marking 77 years of victory over Nazi Germany. May 9th is a very important day after the surrender of Germany on the 8th of May. But the Soviet Union played a very important role in the defeat of Germany. But the message loud and clear, that's the Soviet banner. And the message this time around is going to be reminding the world, reminding Ukraine that they were part of the Soviet Union. It's uh, uncanny and eerie that as Russia and many parts of Europe uh, will be celebrating or marking the occasion of the end of World War II in Europe, the defeat of Germany, Russia is on the brink of yet another war. Will it lead to World War III is the big question. Ukraine fears its troops still hold up in the Azovstal plant face massacre after the evacuation of all women, children and the elderly. Ukraine's military flattened Russian positions on a Black Sea island that was captured in the war's first days has now become a symbol of resistance. This is uh, the last place uh, in Mariupol uh, where uh, Ukrainian forces uh, are still, uh, you know, occupying. Uh, so it seems that in days to come there will be an offensive launched uh, by uh, the Russian side on the Azovstal steel plant uh, uh, to flush out uh, Ukrainian soldiers who are there. Ukrainian counter-offensive is advancing around the second largest city Kharkiv, a key target of the Russian shelling. Will the fall of Mariupol, timed with the day of biggest celebrations of Russian war capabilities, mark a decisive phase of the Ukrainian war? With Geeta Mohan in Moscow and Abhishek Bhalla in Kyiv, Bureau Report, India Today. This is while Russia is celebrating the 77th Victory Day, even as Ukraine war enters its third month already. The speculation is now rife about what President Putin would say in his address. Because Putin's address to the nation on Victory Day will be likely to be one of the most watched events in the country. So the Victory Day parade, giving you a background, is one of the most significant events in Russia. It is held on 9th of May and marks the end of World War II in Europe with the defeat and surrender of Nazi Germany on 8th of May 1945. Moscow and many parts of Russia and Russian captured territories, including Mariupol, are likely to witness celebrations of the Victory Day or what is locally called the Patriotic War. President Vladimir Putin is then expected to use this occasion as a means to promote patriotic unity and showcase country's military might. Among the pro-war editions this year, a group of fighter jets is expected to fly over Moscow. There could be a shape of Z in support of Russian troops. All of this, remember, 129 military vehicles. 10,000 personnel this year could be deployed for a show of strength. 11,000 people, 131 units of industrial and special equipment, 77 aircrafts could take part in this parade. Every year on May 8th, Together with the entire civilized world, we honor everyone who defended the planet from Nazism during World War II. Millions of lost lives, crippled destinies, tortured souls and millions of reasons to say to evil, never again. 
we knew the price our ancestors paid for this wisdom. We knew how important it is to preserve it and pass it on to posterity. But we had no idea that our generation would witness the desecration of the words, which, as it turned out, are not the truth for everyone. This year we say, never again differently. We hear, never again differently. It sounds painful, cruel, without an exclamation, but with a question mark. You say, never again. Tell Ukraine about it. On Feb 24th, the world never was erased. Shot and bombed by hundreds of missiles at 4 a.m., which woke up the entire Ukraine. May 9th, one of the most significant holidays here in Russia and you see throngs of people from across Russia who've come down to Moscow. It's holiday season but for more important for them is to witness the Victory Day Parade or what they call the Patriotic War when Soviet Union won and defeated Nazi Germany. If you see the streets, all the streets over here are now lined up with not just the Russian flags but the Soviet victory flag. This is the Tretsvakaya Street, which is going to witness the parade. Uh, this is where the parade uh, will uh, begin from. It will move. The movement of the columns will take place from here up to the Red Square, where the parade officially is going to take place in front of the huge uh, delegation leadership, including President uh, Putin. On the streets here, in the streets of Moscow, you can see people with uh, newspapers of the time when, when Soviet Union declared victory over Germany and the, uh, and the victory of World War II in Europe. That happened on the, uh, on the 9th of May after Germany surrendered on the 8th of May. St. George's Ribbon as also newspaper that is now being distributed. People over here collecting, reading the material. And uh, President Putin is going to emphasize and reassert the idea of Soviet Union, the idea of being together. This comes at a time when war with Ukraine has gone on to its third month with no, uh, no successful or major victory in sight. We do know that Mariupol certainly has been taken, but what will President Putin be saying is certainly something that not only Russia but the world will be watching. With the journalist Satya Rautre in Moscow, Geeta Mohan for India Today. Let's go on the ground now. Remember, India Today has been reporting from different countries to get you as much perspective as possible. Now joining me in this live telecast is Abhishek Bhalla from Kyiv in Ukraine. Our foreign affairs editor Geeta Mohan is live from Moscow in Russia. Rajesh Pawar is again from Kyiv in Ukraine. First to you, Geeta, as you were bringing us this report, are we expecting perhaps that most, perhaps likely in the sense, uh, an address from Putin with regard to what's been happening in Ukraine or will the focus be only on the victory day? Well, absolutely, the focus is going to be on the war also. Uh, the uh, the uh, Victory Day Parade begins with the presidential address. So we'll see President Putin uh, address the nation right from where we're standing. Across there is the Red Square. And that's where President Putin will be addressing uh, the nation. And he will be mentioning, making some very significant uh, uh, statements on the war between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, but also the reassertion, Puja, is going to be about Soviet. Yes. And that's why, if you see the streets over here, all of them have Russian flag and also Soviet flag. This is the eve of uh, Victory Day and celebrations already underway. We have a band playing right at the back behind me. And uh, a lot of people, uh, the, the entire city is almost in the streets of Moscow today. Uh, all through the day we saw a lot of people over here. It's a weekend too. Uh, but, there, but we do know that a lot of people from across other parts of the uh, country also come down to Moscow to witness uh, the Victory Day Parade. This year is very different. It is a significant one given that Russia is at war. This is the third month 
Uh, and like we said in our reports, no significant gain. There have been gains, but no significant gain in terms of what Russia intended to do. So we'll again have to wait and see what President Putin is really going to say Very in his address. But there will be some significant statements with regards to the war and why Russia is fighting this war. Geeta, please stay on with me. Let's go across now to Ukraine. Rajesh Pawar and Abhishek Bhala continue to be with us. Rajesh, it's going to be very pertinent what he says tomorrow because clearly now we can see that uh, he is not backing down at all. Pooja, very true. I mean, what President Putin says today will be very significant for this war, for Ukraine and for the entire world. See, till now, what Russia has been calling this military operation as special military operation only. And there are reports that he might declare a complete, a proper war against Ukraine. How different that will be from the special operations, maybe their army will, the, the air force of Russia, which has not taken very important part in this war so far. Like we have not seen aircrafts in the air, like in a war torn country. The air force might be inducted with full swing in Ukraine. And as Russia has said, that they will target any kind of convoys coming with military supplies from NATO and America, they will target them. And there might be some announcement in this regard when President Putin speaks today on this Victory Day Parade. Puja. Rajesh, please stay on with me. Abhishek Bhalla is in Kyiv right now. Abhishek, you're in a location where 74 days on a war, while in Russia, 77 years ago, a war is today and its defeat of Nazi Germany is going to be commemorated. Now, isn't it ironical how, you know, he's referring to history while what is happening in modern times is very similar? Well, uh, extremely ironic and, uh, you know, uh, 77 years back, uh, people from Ukraine and Russia uh, fought this uh, war together to defeat Nazi Germany. Uh, today, Putin calls uh, uh, Ukrainians uh, a neo-Nazi state. And amid all this, you know, uh, the uh, Azov regiment has uh, done a press conference. And uh, that's where, you know, the real fierce battle is on in Mariupol. Perhaps the focus of uh, the Victory Day address could be Mariupol because there are indications that the Russian forces would like to completely take over the Azovstal steel plant, according to the Azov regiment, which is again accused by uh, Russia of being, being a new Nazi, uh, you know, a group which uh, is driven by uh, white uh, supremacist ideology. And that group has been fighting very bravely. And in Ukraine, they say that they are the heroes of Ukraine. They are the defenders of Mariupol. Yes. Uh, so in that press conference, uh, the Azov regiment has claimed that they've killed 2,500 Russian forces personnel till now. And they've also faced uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, casualties. They are saying there are several soldiers who are wounded. They need help okay. uh, for them to be evacuated. Civilians have been ev evacuated from there. So perhaps the focus uh, of uh, the announcement could be what is happening in Mariupol. And whatever Putin says, the tone and tenor will set uh, the course for this battle, which could be a very, very long-drawn one. Absolutely, Abhishek, and we'll be tracking all the latest. Uh, we'll be coming to you shortly, as in when, of course, if at all, Vladimir Putin will make that reference. Remember, Geeta Mohan is in Moscow, Russia. She'll be giving us live updates of that Victory Day celebration of 77 years ago today, while our colleagues in Ukraine will be telling us the ground situation in that country. I want to thank all three of you. Stay safe, all of you, and thank you for constantly bringing up to speed with what's been happening both in Russia and Ukraine. Thank you very much. Russian forces have been attacking Odessa, remember, fueling speculation that they might want to take the strategic port on the Black Sea. Here's more on what could it mean if the strategic port is taken away from Ukraine. Russia sets its eyes on Ukraine's lifeline. Recent missile strikes on Odessa in Ukraine's south is fueling speculation about Russia's plan to take the strategic port on the Black Sea. Odessa, which connects Ukraine to the rest of the world, is being pounded with deadly missiles. The largely Russian-speaking city and the cultural hub has seen increased attacks by Moscow in recent weeks. On the 2nd of May, a teenage boy was killed and several injured in Russian strikes on a residential building. The war between the armies might be restricted to some battle zones, but residential areas across Ukraine continue to get pounded by Russian missiles. Yet another 
fresh attack in Odessa, the all-important port town in south of Ukraine, which is strategically very important for Russia as well as Ukraine. Ukrainian troops with their newly supplied military platforms have shifted tactics from defensive to offensive in the region. Ukrainian drones recently sank two Russian patrol boats near the Black Sea Snake Island, indicating that the war is far from over. The destruction of the Russian Slava-class cruiser and the flagship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet Muscova, the 600-foot, 12,500-ton displacement, was a massive blow to the Russian Navy. Russian operations in the Black Sea are being considered extremely significant and the Ukrainian forces have put in all their resources to defend the Black Sea. It is apprehended that amphibious attacks are likely to take place from the Russian side. There is a huge fleet of the Russian Navy in the Black Sea. There are about two dozen warships, several submarines, uh, that are there in the Black, uh, Black Sea. With fierce fighting in cities along Ukraine's southern coast, the key city of Odessa is preparing its defenses to protect the port city from an amphibious attack. On the Russian side, Moscow is strengthening its naval presence to break Kiev's morale and resistance. Can you uh, give us uh, a sense of uh, what the situation has been in the south of Ukraine, especially the threat from the Russian side in the Black Sea, what kind of activities they have been uh, up to? The situation is stable and is under control. However, the Russian Federation still keeps the ships in the Black Sea, which is of threat to Ukraine. And the risk of rocket missiles launch is very high right now. What kind of deployment uh, do they have in the Black Sea? The situation right now is dynamic and it changes all the time. But currently, they have several warships which keep the cruise missile on board as well as several submarines. Russians and Ukrainians fought together in the Second World War against the Nazi Germany. And this war memorial in Odessa is in memory of those who laid down their lives during the Second World War. And now this war memorial is even more significant as far the Ukrainians are concerned. Especially the Ukrainian military says that this war memorial now represents the fight and the valor of the Ukrainian soldiers who are taking on the Russian assault. With camera person Parminda Sharma, this is Abhishek Bhalla in Odessa for India Today. Let's get you another perspective on how the World War II is being seen today. India Today's Foreign Affairs Editor Geeta Mohan brings you this special report from the iconic Levandia Palace from Crimea's Yalta. Now this palace is exactly the site where several key decisions were taken during World War II. Take a look at this look back by Geeta Mohan. A slice of world history. We are in Yalta in Crimea and this is the Levandia Palace. This is where history was made. World order is changing now with the Russia-Ukraine war, but we see that this was the very same place where World War II saw some very important decisions taken amongst the Allied forces. What are those decisions and what really happened? We'll take you inside to show you exactly what and why this Levadia Palace is important and what was the Yalta Conference. This is the room and that's the photograph of that meeting, that one-on-one -on -one meeting that took place apart from the conference uh, with, uh, with a huge delegation and the three allied countries. There was a meeting between Stalin and Roosevelt and the decision over here was that Soviet Union should continue and participate in the Pacific theater as well to not just defeat G Germany here but to defeat Japan which was a bigger problem for America and to get that to achieve that Roosevelt had to give in to the demands of territories that Russia wanted back under its control 
That's why this room becomes historic because if Japan was not defeated, then World War II would not have ended. And Japan's defeat, certainly uh, the Soviet played a very, very critical role in that defeat. This is the historic room where the concluding document of the Yalta Conference was signed among the three leaders, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin. A very important document that you can see over here, but there's an interesting story to tell on how the signatures are placed and why are they placed in the manner in which they are placed. Diplomacy uh, at work over here to see who comes first, who comes uh, last. Alexander. Explain to us what really happened over here. He proposed, why not we will try the order of English alphabet. Mm -hmm. So he comes first and places his signature first one. Okay. So Churchill, as we know, a uh, very shrewd politician of his time, knew that he did not want to come last. Stalin, certainly as host, did not want to come first. And so Churchill's idea of using the English alphabet order worked uh, well for everyone, with Churchill uh, at the top, Roosevelt, and then Stalin uh, right at the bottom. But this is that very same room, and the photographs over there clearly show uh, the historic significance of the Yalta Conference. Where I stand today is where the world leaders, the three world leaders, stood and then sat. The fountain didn't exist then. There were three chairs and the famous photograph that you see everywhere of the three leaders at the Yalta conference is in this very same courtyard. They sat right here trying to change how the world is going to look, ensuring that there is peace. The world order then was very different from the world order today. They fought for a United Nations today the very same world leaders are absolutely divided, questioning the very same organization that they helped build, create. There are many countries who are now questioning the legitimacy, the strength, the power of the United Nations. Many questioning the principles of various countries. While Yalta Conference was one of the crucial conferences to end World War II, we are on the brink of yet another war. Can the world come together to bring about peace is the question. With the journalist Satya Rautre in Yalta, Geeta Mohan for India Today. So as Russia is set to commemorate 77 years ago of the World War II ending, and that, remember, once was Ukraine in it as a Soviet Union. But today, take a look at what Ukraine looks like. And this is because Russia has chosen to attack and target any city from Mariupol to, to region around the Kyiv. From Zaporozhia to other areas as well, one by one, including Kharkiv, are facing bombardment 74, year, 74 days on. 